Welcome to WTSA, the World Telecommunications Standardization Assembly being held here in New Delhi. And I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Dr. Vandy Verma, who is the Development Program Manager for NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, as well as Chief Engineer for NASA's Mars Perseverance Robot Operations. All sounds very, very exciting. Welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me here. Now, I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about uh, the keynote that you just delivered here by the AI uh, for good uh, element of this uh, particular event uh, on autonomous robotics and AI, how AI is driving uh, progress in planetary exploration. Perhaps in a nutshell, you could tell us a little bit about some of the key messages that you were delivering there. Yeah, so I think one of the things I was talking about a little bit is how, what NASA's mission is, and one of the things is uh, searching for life on planetary bodies. And in order to do that, how we really need AI and autonomous robotics, and how we're actually using it. So lots of examples, you know, we have self-driving cars on Mars, essentially. That's how we're exploring long distances. We also use AI to understand what data we should send back to Earth and how to do the science, because there's so much information. Most of the places the robots are going, uh, no human or robot has ever been. And it's the question of, like, I'm looking at things that are new, uh, what should I uh, send back to Earth? So talking about how we are doing that, and also uh, talking about a report we did about what we want to do in the future that people can participate in. So tell us a little bit about the future, and, uh, and is it looking uh, rosy, challenging? It's, it's very exciting as far as, you know, I think it's really exciting. So in general, you know, we've, we want to continue to expand on what we've done, and the areas that we want to go for planetary exploration are places like Moon of Jupiter and to planetary bodies that are much further out. As we are going further, we're going to have longer and longer time delays. And so we're going to need more AI and robotics. And so it's very exciting for autonomous robotics and AI because it's almost essential for planetary exploration. So robotics, AI, is that putting paid to human exploration in, in, in space? You know, they go hand in hand. In general, humans are curious. We will always have human exploration as well. But r robots are going to be the frontier because the further out we go, we're always going to send robots first. In fact, they are likely to be the ones building the habitats for the humans. But essentially, humans are always going to want to go themselves as well. And how are things going? I mean, you, you're, you're also um, NASA Mars Perseverance uh, um, a Robot Operations Chief Engineer there. Have you had any issues that, uh, uh, that have made you uh, stay awake at night? You know, it's very, actually, really exciting. Almost n never do you execute things exactly as they're planned because it's new. It's, but it's been doing really well. The rover, you know, as I was talking about, has collected 28 samples. So for the first time, the mission is collecting samples because we've never brought anything back from Mars to Earth. But there's a subsequent mission that's going to bring back the samples. And we've already collected 28 samples from all across this crater on Mars called Jezero Crater. And uh, it's driven almost 30 kilometers on Mars. Uh, almost 90% of that has been self-driving. So it's going really well. But, you know, as we go further on the mission, there's always challenges. Uh, we had a science instrument where you position it, it's like an instrument really close to the surface, where one of the covers had stopped working and wouldn't open. How do you figure out how to get around that? So, you know, we were able to bring that instrument back into function. So there's a lot of challenges that come about all the time. Uh, and that's been very exciting. And how has AI been accelerating progress in space exploration? Yeah, AI has really been radically changing how we do uh, exploration. So one of the aspects is that as you're driving in this area, it's mostly terrain that if you look at what is interesting, what is not, and using AI to better judge what are the things that are actually going to result in scientific discovery is one of the areas we're using it. But there's a lot of potential. Uh, it can be used in ways where the data we send back from Mars to Earth, what should we send back? Like we get so much data, we can't send it all back. So essentially having AI determine like what is the most interesting, that's one area we're using it a lot in. Other areas is actually training human operators could be another example. Like 
what are the decisions humans are making and can it make a suggestion so that you can on earth arrive at those decisions faster? Uh, so there's lots of lots and lots of ways. Uh, you mentioned AI determining things. It reminds me a little bit of uh, the HAL computer in 2001 who, that basically starts uh, taking charge of things. Are there any worries with regards to AI that, uh, that it, as I say, commandeers missions and that kind of thing and, and changes the outcome of, of uh, space exploration? Maybe you take the word out. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't remember. <laughs> That's but, right. I'm sorry. From the vocabulary. No, Indeed. actually, it's one of those things that we uh, you know, talk about a lot because the challenge often is how do you, you can come up with suggestions, but how do you verify that it is going to make the right decision? And actually AI is making that harder because the decisions aren't completely arbitrary and nonsensical. They're actually believable. And so this has actually got a lot of work in how do you verify a system that has AI in it? Because it's not giving you a one answer. You can check a deterministic path. You have to look at ways that you verify the process with which you are building these systems. So it's a very active area of research and uh, very exciting. Uh, but you know, in general, I think we have found as human society that as technology advances, we kind of develop a new relationship with technology and I expect we're going to do that. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you, has AI changed the way that NASA works? Absolutely. I mean, I think AI, it, it essentially, you know, in the beginning, I've been driving robots on Mars for like, you know, 15 years. We used to do more and more instructions. You're like, I'm going to tell you where to go and go exactly where we tell you to go. And that's comfortable because you're just like, either it's going to do it or it's going to stop. Now you're like, go to that location and you figure out the way. And it's different because you, it's going to take a path that is very different. You're not, you're not scripting it. But it, the gain from that is you come back, you know, you tell the instructions tomorrow's on Friday, you come back on Monday and you're like, wow, we're 700 meters further. Whereas when humans are telling it, you could only make progress maybe, you know, less than 100 meters. So yes, it is uncomfortable because you don't control as much. I, but at the same time, uh, what the results we are seeing are absolutely worth it. I love that sentence. I've been driving robots on Mars the last 15 years. I'm sure you, plenty of people are very envious of your, uh, your jobs. But look, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. And thank you for delivering this, uh, this keynote at our event. And hopefully we'll catch up with you again in the very near future. Now, thank you for having me. It's been really interesting. It's been very interesting. More interesting for me, I can tell you. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, our podcast on our podcast channels. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.